Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, long time no see. Uh, the last video we made, um, <laughs> we said that we got a placement and that it wasn't a drill. Uh, it turns out it, it was, was a drill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> jokes on us. Yeah. Um, in the back of our minds, it was like we knew that with that placement and having a week before the kid was actually going to be coming into our home, it's like. Oh, so much can happen. Yeah, in that amount of time. So and what it, happened it <laughs> um, about three or four days after we accepted and they said that the child would be placed in our home, mm -hmm. uh, they called and said that they found a kinship mm -hmm. um, to, to take the child. So, Which is great. Yeah. Um, that's definitely what you want to have happen. Um, but yeah, like we went, you know, nearly four days expecting and Planning, preparing. And yeah. Yeah, so um, it was a little bit of a blow. Um, you know, you try to be realistic, but, you know, people who do this, like, there's a reason why we're doing it, and so your heart's in it. So it's hard not to get invested when you hear that you are you have a kid coming. Yeah. I um, feel like each call that we get, like, you start to make a connection with the kid, even yeah. though you haven't met him yet. And then yeah. when we knew, we thought we knew that, you know, they said the kid was coming, like... You start to mentally prepare yeah. too, and, and you get like their name and every like this yeah. one we had like her name, um, which obviously we can't you know say that, but yeah, just so that you know people who are watching, you know, you can kind of get an understanding from all of our rejected <laughs> calls um, of you know kind of like the you know the situations that foster parents are dealing with as kids are coming in. Um, you know, because these kids are coming with all of these terrible experiences. Um, so I think this last one, it was uh, the reason why we had a week um, to prepare is because the child was coming from another foster home who was moving. And so her birthday was um, the following Friday or Saturday. Yeah. And then she was coming to us on Sunday. Um, so we were going to, like, plan a birthday party or something. Yeah, like... I was already getting prepared to get her, you like know, gifts, a little gift yeah. and stuff. But um, I think with that one, they found kinship. They did. So um, what kinship, it took me a little bit by surprise because I thought this child's already in foster care. Wouldn't there have been kinship that, you know, would have come up before this? And, um, you know, there were some people who kind of informed me that, Kinship doesn't necessarily have to be, like, blood family. Um, so they could have found, like, a teacher that had built a relationship with this child who wanted to step in um, and create some consistency. Um, that is what, you know, you want to have happen versus yeah. this five-year-old coming to us and we're strangers, yeah. you know. I think they, they've done studies, haven't they? That mm -hmm, if a so. child can stay with you know, someone familiar that they're better off. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a reason why that's pushed so much. Um, but since then, so that was a little bit of a letdown for us, yeah. but, and um, then we and haven't gotten a call since then. Yeah. It's, so, it's been really, really slow. Yeah. And the reason behind that, um, we've been talking to our agency, we've been doing some trainings during this month. Um, yeah, we're actually required to do, 20 hours a year 20 hours per year ongoing training after you yeah. get a license to maintain your license yeah so we thought we would knock out some hours in the meantime before you know life gets crazy with a placement but um we actually got a letter from our agency um shortly after that fell through it was like the yeah. next week basically the letter said um you guys have probably noticed that there aren't as many foster calls. That's because we're not getting as many foster calls. Mm -hmm. um, and then they went into detail. Yeah, it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense in the letter. Yeah. But um, since that letter, it was basically saying calls have decreased. We're asking our families to take a look at their child preferences, whether it's age, um, number of open beds that you have, like if you have space you know, maybe take in a sibling set um, to really just reconsider your child preferences because there's a higher need for, you know, teenagers, um, primarily teenagers. So we talked about it and we, we said, well, um, you know, we were originally five to 10. 
And so we decided we'll we'll bump it up to twelve. We felt comfortable with that. Again, recently we called and bumped it up to sixteen. No, fifteen. Fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> we bumped it up to fifteen. I think for now that's our absolute max. Yeah. Yeah. Because we haven't dealt, you know, other than nieces and nephews, yeah. we haven't dealt with kids like that to know how to really, you know, parent them. Properly. Yeah, we didn't want to like set the kid up to fail in our home. We didn't want to set ourselves up for failure. So that's yeah. why it's not that we wouldn't want teenagers in our home. It's that we don't know if we would be ready. So we were hoping to kind of, um, you know, okay, get a 10 year old and then they're with you for a few years and then, okay, well we feel comfortable up to 13 and then yeah. you have a 13 year old and then they stay for a little while. So we thought that we'd eventually get there. Um, but we decided, especially cause calls are down we would at least be open to hearing from um, or hearing calls with, with older up to 15. And another thing is um, talk to the agency and you had mentioned like in the letter, they, they were trying to give reasons like why the amount of calls has gone down, but it didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So once we talked to the agency, they informed us, there are two things that are happening with our county. One of them is kind of positive, and that is they're putting more emphasis on trying to locate kinship care. So, um, and I don't know exactly what that means because, you know, we, we thought that that was like happening anyway. Yeah. I don't... There, what I would guess is that they probably are casting a wider net. Yeah. So before they might have looked for aunts, uncles, grandparents, things yeah. like that. And now they're probably looking at teachers and, yeah. you know, people that maybe aren't necessarily related. Neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, friends, parents. Yeah. Um, that sort of thing. So that's that's really, really good. Um, the other thing, and part of this is speculation, and part of it... Um, you know, we haven't seen like a document that says this, but our agency said that if the child is not directly involved in the abuse, then the child would stay in the home. And so I say that with a disclaimer of I don't know exactly what that yeah. means. But I think they're saying like if it's secondary. Yeah. So if a husband's beating a wife, the child might not necessarily get taken into the home. Right. Um, and yeah, so, and it was something where when we were talking to the agency, even, even the agency was hesitant about the impact of this and they don't necessarily fully understand what it, what it will result in. And if it's in the best in, interest of the children, um, uh, my speculation is that the county is trying to limit the children in foster care due to financial reasons. Um, so that's like kind of my negative assumption of like why that's happening and I hope that's not the case and if we get more information on like those changes we'll let you know but our our county has you know some of our surrounding counties um like many others have a huge uh drug abuse really bad so as the drug abuse increases you know child children in foster care are gonna in increase and that has a financial impact on the county, and so um, it, it could just be a way that the county is trying to limit that. So those are the reasons why our agency said that they used to be getting 20 to 30 calls a week, and now they're getting four. Which is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but then, We have been told that around the holidays there's more calls. Yeah. Christmas is two weeks away, so we're expecting there to be some more replacement calls. You mean like today? Right. <laughs> so we got a call today. Um, you were in a meeting. Yeah. When the phone rang. Yeah. So I was working. I went into a meeting and usually I take my phone in with me. Um, but this time I did not. And when I left the meeting, I looked at my phone and there was a voicemail. It didn't even ring. <laughs> Service in my building is very spotty. Um, but I had a voicemail from our agency for a 13 year old uh, female. And immediately called, left a voicemail, texted, <laughs> um, said, oh my gosh, please let this not be too late. It was 25 minutes after the voicemail. And that quickly, the agency had already recommended another family. So it was, it yeah, was a bit so of a letdown. the agency down. recommends a family to the county. 
-hmm. basically all these agencies say, okay, we think this family could be a good fit. Then the county decides yeah. which of those families they want. But then she texted you back saying that the placement is until tomorrow and that they haven't decided yet. Yeah. So they added us to yeah. the list. Yeah. So the county um, notified the agencies after, you know, like you said, so, so the county contacts all the agencies who recommend one family. Then the county looks at all those families and says, we think this is the best fit. Well, the county from that group of you know potential families didn't necessarily see something that was a match so they told the agencies again that they're still open to possibilities and so what that means is that an agency can recommend a second family so we are that second family the placement would be for tomorrow so i got this call at 4 p.m um since the placement is tomorrow it may the they basically told me that they would call me back tomorrow. Um, chances are they're not making calls after hours if if the child isn't going to be, um, you know, removed or wherever they are at the moment. I, I don't know. But so, yeah, so we will know more. Um, fingers tomorrow. crossed yeah. if, if we are a good fit yeah. for, for this little kiddo. Yeah, we'll let you guys know either way. And. I have a feeling by the first of the year, we should probably have a placement yeah. or a lot of calls. Yeah. I, I think that us increasing our age and just the time of the year, um, I think we're about to get get some calls. Um, we're coming up on our year anniversary that we started taking classes. What yeah. was our first class? In January. January, like January 10th. If, yeah. And it's like December. Three weeks away. <laughs> It'll yeah. be our year anniversary. It's crazy. Well, and I will say, um, it was just a couple of days ago that the agency updated their records that we could take up to 15. Yeah. Um, and then a couple of days after that, we get a call for a 13 year old. So, um, I do think that the need is out there for the older kids and hopefully we're going to be able to make an impact, um, with that, with that age. Hopefully we don't lose that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you guys are at all interested in becoming foster parents or adopting or you just want to learn more, you can learn more at adoptuskids.org. We'll put a link to it in the description of this video. We'll keep you posted, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. See ya.